and welcome to Tanka Talks. This talk is the first of a short trilogy on the Buddhas of wealth and abundance. There are actually quite a few of these kind of deities, but here I've placed the three most important wealth Buddhas together, Vajravana, Jambala and Vasudhara. And actually this year I offer Tanka drawing and painting courses and lectures on all three of them. One thing is striking when you look at these deities. These Buddhas of wealth have the color of shiny gold. But if you listen to this talk to learn how to become very rich and to shop every day in the most expensive store so you can flaunt that on social media, I have to disappoint you a little. Sorry. Because as Jeff Watt puts it like this, although well-being gods are extremely popular in Tantric Buddhism, their purpose and function are often misunderstood. Of course, there's the obvious purp purpose. The deities are there for the acquisition of wealth and the accumulation of fortune. But how this is understood comes from a religious perspective, not from a material perspective. These wealth deities have the purpose of assisting Buddhist practitioners in acquiring the necessary worldly goods and materials in support of religious practice and continuation on a spiritual path. It is therefore not just about the practitioner himself becoming rich, but about gathering the right matter so that higher goals can be achieved for the benefit of others. You can compare it with the oxygen mask in an airplane that you first have to put on yourself before you can put it on your child. First, you have to make sure that you have a stable basis no more worries financially, for example. And then you make some time free to develop yourself on a personal and spiritual level so that you can clearly see how you can help others in the best way and really mean something to others. And these Buddhas really can help you achieve that. These practices of wealth are intended for religious and spiritual purposes, so not for personal gain. These kind of Buddhas and their practices are also used for giving medicine to the sick, feeding the poor, but also example for financing pilgrimages and building stupas and Buddhist centers in order to inspire others on their spiritual path. Let's have a look at the first Buddha, Vajravana. Vajravana is a worldly deity who is worshipped as both a protector and a benefactor. His Tibetan name is Nam To Se son of Namto. And as a protector, he is known as the guardian of the north, the guardian of the northern direction. And actually the guardian kings of the four directions are the gatekeepers who fight evil and protect the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha. The story goes that they swore their loyalty to the Buddha and took an oath of protection for him. They're often depicted on large sets of tankas that are related to the Buddha. Here you see that Vajravana holds the banner of victory, which is also part of the eight auspicious symbols. I don't have time to go deeper into that for now, but because I want to take you to his key symbol that he holds in his left hand, this beautiful jewel-spitting mongoose. This mongoose is a beautiful little animal, family of the meerkat. And it's not just a mongoose, no, it's a mongoose that spits out streams of precious jewels, precious stones and other precious elements when Vajravana slightly squeezes it, without hurting of course. And he spits out so many jewels that it can almost be seen as a rain shower or a waterfall creating a pile of valuable gems on the ground that fulfills all wishes. But the funny thing about this gorgeous tanka is that at the bottom of the painting, you see this greedy man. Just look at his expression and his hands. And he's placed a big container to catch all the jewels to keep it to, them, to himself. But let's hope that he's lit by the flame of Vajravana and uses his wealth in a good way. And I want to end this small talk for now with a real mongoose, because also in reality, 
It's a very brave animal. He's the sworn enemy of the snake. And on YouTube, you can find all kinds of movies of mongoose who are fighting with cobras. And by the way, the snake in Tibetan Buddhism is also a well-known symbol that stands for hatred and jealousy. And I'm sure I'll get into that in some other Tanka talk. Now in my next talk, I will explain a bit more about Jambala, who's actually the most famous of the three. And the talk after that is about the female Buddha, Vasudhara. I hope you liked it and learned a little bit more. And I hope to see you next time. Do you want to learn more about Vajravana and the other world deities and maybe even learn how to draw and paint them? Just check out the links to my upcoming Tanka art courses and lectures in the description below.